Roughly around one year ago, we've discussed an unusual proposition from one of the studies you can find in the description that there actually seems to be a direct connection between supermassive black holes in centers of various galaxies and the expansion of the universe, or more specifically, the idea known as the dark energy. And to be more specific, in this paper, Duncan Farah and his team essentially make a proposition that the mysterious dark energy might actually be the result of various black holes in various galaxies, which don't just store this energy inside of them, but also actively produce it by absorbing a lot of matter. And so here they basically propose that if most of these black holes contain dark energy and are basically the main source of the dark energy, or in more scientific terms, they're directly coupled to dark energy, this might potentially explain the expanding universe, the acceleration of the expansion of the universe, and even the Hubble tension. But we now have the second paper that takes it even a little bit further, making additional propositions and potentially providing even more clues to why this might actually be the case. Now, just as a side note, this is still a relatively hypothetical proposition, but after this recent paper, it actually now has just a little bit more evidence. And so, hello on full person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of these propositions and what it might mean for our understanding of cosmology and basically try to make sense of what's being proposed. Although I guess first, a super quick reminder. So today, the best explanation we have for why the universe seems to be expanding and even accelerating its expansion is the mysterious dark energy. Basically some kind of an unknown substance or phenomenon that seems to represent 70% of everything in the universe and is directly responsible for making things move away from one another faster and faster and faster. But the only thing we know about it is that the evidence or the observations basically suggest that it seems to exist. Or in other words, we seem to observe that galaxies farther and farther away from us seem to be moving away faster and faster and faster. So something is accelerating their expansion. And so for the past two decades, that something has been referred to as dark energy. But we naturally have no idea what it's possibly made out of. Or to be more exact, we don't even know if it's a particle, if it's some kind of a force, if it's just part of the equation, if it's something referred to as vacuum energy, or even if it's maybe some kind of a miscalculation on our part. We just know that the observations seem to suggest that it exists. And one of the main ways scientists have been trying to resolve this mystery is by conducting observations with the instrument known as DASI, Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument a really intriguing instrument containing 5,000 robotic eyes that sort of resemble something like this. And as the name suggests, its main purpose has been trying to basically study this dark energy and trying to figure out what's actually going on here. And so the data from DASI was actually used in that recent study we're discussing today. Here they used observations from tens of millions of different galaxies, focusing on their acceleration away from us, but also focusing on the potential size of the central black hole, along with the number of stars being made, which could then result in additional black holes being produced. In other words, the focus was on the idea of dark energy and the growth of black holes. For example, one of the most recent releases by DASI definitively confirmed that the density of dark energy seems to increase with time. And so by combining this data with observations of galaxies and the size of their black holes, in the study from last year, researchers discovered a kind of a cosmological coupling between supermassive black holes and the overall amount of dark energy at that time. In other words, with more and more supermassive black holes, the overall density of dark energy seemed to increase over time. There was a kind of a cosmological coupling between the growth of black holes and the expansion of the universe. With the initial explanation being that, well, maybe these massive black holes basically contain a huge amount of vacuum energy, or in essence, I guess, the actual particle that the dark energy represents, and it was this that was causing the universe to expand. And so in some sense, it would suggest that supermassive black holes don't just attract a lot of matter, they also kind of repulse a lot of stuff around themselves through the presence of the dark energy on the inside. And so even though locally gravity would win and would attract everything, on a much wider scale, it would actually push things away. But this was actually not even a new proposition, this was just a new evidence. The theory behind this was actually discussed back in the 60s. And so it was the study from the 2023 that basically linked massive black holes with this vacuum energy. 
but obviously discovering the evidence that there was a coupling between supermassive black holes and the expansion of the universe could maybe be explained in some other ways. And this is exactly why back then the authors suggested that maybe other physicists can come up with some other explanations or possibly discover some additional evidence. And that's kind of what happened now. About a year and a half after, we get a second paper. Desi dark energy time evolution is recovered by cosmologically coupled black holes. Yeah, this title didn't really make sense to me at first either. But then as you actually start reading this, it kind of makes more sense. And so this time, in this study, the researchers did not focus on supermassive black holes, they actually focused on just regular black holes. And specifically, black hole production based on the cosmic star formation. And so here once again they compared the recent data from DESI that showed them the expansion of the universe with the data showing us how many different black holes were probably produced during different times. This is based on the idea behind various large stars going supernova. And once again, surprisingly, the two phenomena were actually linked. As the new black holes were created from various supernova, the amount of dark energy or the acceleration of the universe seemed to increase by just as much. In other words, this was the first official link between a black hole birth and the increase in dark energy. And because here the focus was on young black holes, with most of them formed during the star formation epoch, the fact that there is actually a link is already kind of intriguing. Now obviously here this is still basically just correlation, but this is a really strong correlation. It essentially suggests that the more black holes there are in the universe, and the more massive they are, the more the universe seems to accelerate. Which, as the authors in this paper suggest, means that this idea of coupling is no longer just a theoretical question, this is now just a question of experimental proof. We now have to figure out why there is this link and what exactly is happening here. But the main explanation that's provided right now is just the idea of this vacuum energy being produced by black holes. And it's actually a really intriguing explanation because it potentially resolves some additional issues. And so here the assumption is that all black holes in the entire universe convert baryonic matter, or essentially just atoms, into dark energy. And this dark energy, or this vacuum energy, is then deposited inside the black holes and causes the universe to expand. But because they're continuously converting matter into vacuum energy, this actually also explains another major mystery. The mystery of missing baryons. Today this is known as the missing baryon problem, and it's the idea that there's about 30% of physical matter that seems to be missing from the universe based on what's predicted by various models. And currently it's unknown where it went. Now it has been suggested to be maybe just hidden between galaxies and possibly invisible, but this study explains it differently. It actually suggests that approximately 30% of baryons were most likely converted into dark energy over time and are now just inside black holes as vacuum energy. Which would also explain why the universe is actually expanding faster today than it was before. And so in some sense this potentially solves things like Hubble tension, missing baryon problem, and of course explains dark energy. And at the same time it also kind of removes the idea behind singularity. Because here the black holes don't contain singularities, they contain huge amounts of vacuum energy. But there's a big problem with this proposition. And the problem is that Obviously, there is no exact mechanism that can explain any of this. Specifically, there is no explanation for how is it that matter converts into dark energy and what exactly happens at the event horizon to suddenly transform baryons into vacuum energy. But that study in the description does provide at least a few potential explanations involving theories that are just way beyond my pay grade and also theories that would take like days to explain. For example, there is something known as press and Tukolsky process, which can convert black hole spin into mass. And that's one of the potential explanations. But we obviously have nothing concrete yet. And so at the moment we don't really have any exact explanations, except for this unusual evidence and unusual observations connecting black holes with the overall density of dark energy. Now because this is just two papers for now, we're probably not going to know much more until maybe a few years from now. But nevertheless, these are still really exciting propositions and for all we know might resolve certain mysteries in like 3 to 5 years from now. But because obviously nobody knows where this goes just yet and because this emission has really just begun 3 years ago, we obviously need a lot more data, a lot more observations and a lot more proof. And so until then, 
Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.